Hey guys, I want to walk you through a fun little project I'm doing. This is to help some of my panoramic photography. I'm a fan of doing these kinds of shots. Uh, what you're seeing here is a, an example of one I did recently. This is actually a really cropped one. I had to squish in the sides to fit this frame. It's a pretty big frame. This is over my couch. Say hello to Chloe. But this is about the biggest frame I can get economically shipped. So yeah, I fit it just to see what it would look like. Ideally, I could print this about 10 feet wide, and uh, you can still see tons and tons of details even in this relatively small size. This is probably about 100 megapixel total. Several shots made up uh, to do it. You know, you know, you know all about panoramic photography. That's not what this is about. But one tool that I want to make is an L bracket. Now, when you're out shooting your panoramic photos, you obviously, at least should, have your camera set up on a tripod and all you do is simply rotate the camera, take a shot, rotate the camera, take a shot, etc. Now ideally you want your camera in portrait orientation but the problem is when you go to portrait orientation your camera gets droopy. When you shift it over like that, your center balance is completely thrown off, so your tripod is much less effective. Plus, it's hard to actually get the level you want. It's If you put a heavy lens on, like a 70 to 200, a 300, 400, you can't do this. I mean, you get some very nasty droop, and it's really hard to keep it actually level as you rotate and take the shots. So what you need is called an L-bracket. An L bracket is just what it sounds like. It's a piece of metal that you mount the camera to that will then mount to your tripod so you can have everything vertical on your tripod and properly supported, but have your camera in the portrait orientation. Now the problem is these darn brackets are insanely expensive, hundreds of dollars, basically for a piece of metal, a couple holes drilled in them. So that's ridiculous. I'm not paying that. If you want to do that, that's fine. There's great companies out there like really right stuff that will sell you that all day long. Also, sometimes I like to use my battery grip and sometimes I don't. Ideally, you don't. But in some situations, if you're on sturdy ground, not out in the wind or anything, there's absolutely no problem with using, especially in portrait orientation. Landscape, yeah, you do get some wobble from it and I don't use that in the studio or anything, but out shooting landscapes for Panoramas, there's absolutely no problem with doing that. But the problem is when you buy an L bracket, you have to buy one specifically for use with or without your battery grip because it changes the dimensions. And the only other option is uh, there's one who makes it, I think it's Manfrotto, makes a universal L bracket, but it is really clunky, it gets horrible reviews, and it's still like 100 bucks. So I'm gonna make my own. I got this piece of extruded aluminum cut to my specifications. And I'll put the link in the article here to the actual site I use. There's a few out there that use it, uh, that do the same thing. But the point is, this cost me 12 bucks, I think it was. And, you know, you can use any size you want, but I got a specific size here. What did I get? Get my tape measure out. Why is this hard with one hand? Plah easier with your mouth. All right, so I got a six by six piece here from outside edge to outside edge. This gives me a lot, enough length and depth to use my camera with or without my battery grip. So that'll give me, but also you need clearance here because you need to be able to open your flaps to put in things such as your remote shutter release, which is also absolutely critical for doing panoramas or anything really on a tripod outdoors. So what I've done, I'm actually going to put it in this way. What I've done is measured out my points and I figured out this little dot here is where I'm going to actually drill a through hole and this will mount to the bottom of my camera. And this gives me the most coverage uh, all the way up to my strap so it's not hitting anything on that side and it still gives me a good inch of actual clearance space for the adapters once I have the camera mounted. And then these two holes, I'm going to drill, I'm um, actually going to, well, I'm going to drill this side and tap them 
and use one of these standard tripod quick release type 5 8 quarter inch mounting bolt with an easy little fold handle here and that is what I will attach a quick release plate to the bottom of this too. Also, what's very important doing panoramic photos is to use a focus rail. This is something that not many people know about or use, but the problem is when you do a panoramic photo and you've got your camera on the tripod normally, so it's centered, right? As you rotate the camera to take your shots, you're rotating basically, you know, over the, the center of the camera. Where this hole is, that's what you're rotating over. Which is fine if you're doing a single shot. It's basically in line with the, the sensor of the camera right in the middle of the body. But when you're doing panoramics, you're changing your actual point of view from shot to shot. So it's adding distortion into your shot. What this type of focusing reel does is allow you to reposition the depth of where your camera is positioned. And I'll do a separate video on how to actually find the proper depth. It depends on each focal length and each lens are all different. But what you want to do is actually rotate around the internal focus point, also called the nodal point of each lens. So you want the actual rotation point to be in line somewhere in the middle of the lens. There's nowhere on the outside that'll tell you. You have to actually do some test shots to find it. But that puts your actual pivot point right in line where it should be. And this focus rail allows you to very easily just crank it into position. And what I'm gonna do is I'll measure each of my lenses that I typically use, and then just make some marks here on the scale so I can dial right into whatever lens I'm using. So let's go ahead and build our L bracket. Welcome to my real man cave. My little tool shack here in the garage. Anyway, to complete this project, we're gonna need some things. Now you might need to purchase some of this stuff. First thing you're gonna need is either a drill press or at least a table vise. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just big enough so that we can put our new bracket in there and drill and tap these holes. Now, like I said, all we're going to be doing on the one side that actually connects to the camera, we're going to be putting in a through hole and that is just going to be a bolt running through and attaching to the camera. And then on these bottom two, we're going to drill holes through and then on the back side, tap them so that we can screw on a quick release plate and that will attach down to our tripod or in this case, our focusing reel. So, uh, the first thing you need to do is decide exactly how you're going to be mounting. There are several options for actually mounting the camera to the metal. The easiest example, and what I'm going to be doing, is simply using a bolt directly through to connect to the camera. Now, if you like, you could use a quick release plate on it, and that would allow you to, if you wanted to, use the camera in landscape mode instead of portrait mode, but I know that I'm only using this for panoramic photography, so I'm never going to be using this plate in normal landscape mode. There's just no point. I'm always going to be taking vertical shots to do a panorama. So I don't need a quick release plate because it's never going to mount to my tripod in this position. So I just need a bolt. Now, if you have extra bolts from for example, a quick release plate, or in my case, I got an extra one with my focusing reel right here. You can get them with the nice little folding handles built in. I've got actually a few different ones. This one has a bigger handle. But the point is you need to have the correct thread. This is a what's called quarter inch 20 thread. It's a very standard size. And if you don't have one of these, all you need to do is go to Home Depot and get a little package, go into the fastener department, and they sell a little package of four bolts and nuts, and they'll have varying lengths in quarter inch 20. Costs you a couple bucks. The actual depth you need is going to depend on a couple things. 
one, if you're using the quick release or not, because you can put the bolt all the way through it. So this obviously adds some depth if you're using that. And secondly, the actual depth of your metal. Now this is a thick piece. I didn't want it or need it this thick. However, I did need a six by six length and width. And they only sell it in the, this is the, the thinnest piece of aluminum I could get. If you don't need a battery grip, if you know you're never going to use your camera with a battery grip to do this, you can get smaller pieces. You can get a four by three and get it almost half this thickness. So, I mean, this is overkill. It's not gonna hurt anything. It adds a little bit more stability, but it's not needed, not needed at all. I would prefer this thinner. However, like I said, couldn't get it, so this is what I gotta deal with. Now, what you have to do is measure the depth. If you look at these bolts, you can look at one off of any quick release or anything that attaches you have photography-wise, it's gonna be the same setup. You got a little bit of thread and then some bare shoulder. That, it's easier to see on this one because it has a separate shoulder piece. Up until that first shoulder, that is all in the camera. This threaded part to that first shoulder bump there, all of that goes into the camera. So what I want to do, I'm going to drill a through hole so I can get this through, and this is a quarter inch, use a quarter inch bit to make a hole, and then I want the very edge of that shoulder to be flush with the edge of the metal. So then I'm going to drill a bigger hole and I'm going to countersink it so that the rest of this can go down into the metal a bit and get my perfect depth. If you don't want to do that, you know, if you don't want to mess around, all you have to do is then go buy a longer bolt. And I would probably buy like a three quarter inch long bolt and that would, you know, stick out a little bit further. Not a huge deal, but I just like a little bit cleaner setup. All it involves is a little bit more drilling, you know, not a big deal. But actually, I don't know if I have a bit that big because I would need one to clear not only the head of the bolt, but the handle. So I'll see what bits I have. I got a few here, but I got another couple kits. I might just go buy a bigger bolt and do a through hole, but we'll see once I start getting into it. But first of all, I have to drill the holes and then we'll go through tapping. For tapping, if you don't already have a tap and handle set, uh, this is all you need. Now, this particular one is a little expensive. It was like 17 bucks, but uh, they were out of the cheaper one. They have one that's only like eight bucks. But this is a lot heavier duty. I didn't mind spending a little bit extra. So basically, this is just a chuck and a handle. This is so you can actually turn the tap. This is a tap and drill bit combo. It's the precise size that it needs. It's a 1420, same spec as the bolt. And all you do is you drill the hole through, and then we're gonna put this inside the handle and turn it by hand, and that will actually cut the threads in here, and then we can screw a bolt in. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, here I'm ready to drill the hole. This is gonna be the mount hole for the bolt directly to the camera. And the location of this hole is to taste. This is just to give me enough clearance on what is the left side that you're looking at so I can put in my remote shutter release and there's enough backing material that uh, it's going to give me a good grip on the actual bottom of the battery grip. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this through. It's absolutely nothing special. So that hole is drilled. I'm going to go ahead and drill two through holes. The, locate, um, the reason I'm doing two is I want to use this either with or without my battery grip because I bought a long one that gives me the option of doing both. So all I need to do is drew, drill and tap two different holes and then all I have to do is switch the plate position on the bottom if I happen to use my camera without the battery grip. And to find these locations all you're doing is measuring the distance between the bottom of the camera to the center point of the lens. And uh, an easy way to find that on Canons, for example, is to just measure to the middle of the lens release button. But it's really easy to find. Just use a tape measure and uh, put the camera like it would be mounted here. So it'd be on its side and you just measure over, find your center point. And no, that's not in the center, but it's marking my depth. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drill these two through holes and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the tapping to actually make the threads for our bolt holes. All right, we've got all three through holes drilled now. The next step is going to be using the tap and I've inserted it into the tool. And this is just a hand tool. It's got an adaption for a ratchet, but you want to do this by hand because it's very important to feel what you're doing. First thing we're going to do is put a little lubrication, um, any silicon spray or WD-40 is fine. And that's just to help the metal escape as we're going to be tapping. What we're going to do is start the tool in the hole and it's very important to be perfectly straight. This needs to, especially when it's starting, this is going to cut the metal and actually make the threads for the bolts. So we're going to lube it up and then we're going to very slowly and carefully start it and just turn it by hand, go straight through and we're just going to run it through. We don't need to go all the way through but there's no harm in doing it. And we'll go from there. So I've lubricated the tip. I've got it a couple turns in. You just very gently, it's best to use two hands, but I'm holding the phone just to show you here. Very slowly turn it, keeping it perfectly straight. It'll self-guide itself through. And every few turns you want to back it out and clear off the debris because it's cutting the aluminum and you need to make space. It'll just help it turn easier. So now I feel it getting pretty tight. I'm going to back it out, clean off all the aluminum bits. Be very careful. It's not hard to do, you just need to be careful. Just keep unscrewing until it comes out. There. And you can see it's got debris in the threads and a little bit coming out of the hole. Just uh, blow them away or brush them away and keep going through. And it'll only take us, uh, you know, probably a minute for each hole. All right, now we've got both holes tapped. They're a quarter inch 20, so our standard camera screw or bolt should go right in. And it does, just like going into a camera. So, like I said, these two on the bottom are going to be, well actually they're going to mount directly to my slide rail, but if you were to put this directly in a tripod, you can mount a quick release plate to it. But like I said, I'm only using this for panoramic photography, so I'm not bothering with a quick release plate on the L bracket. This is going to be a specialty tool and uh, you know I'm not going to be popping it on or off the camera or changing the orientation, so it makes it simpler for me. But it's completely up to you if you're going to be using this in different situations. You can use quick release plates. Put one here. You can move it on either one if you want to build one like this for use with or without the battery grip. And you can put one here and then you can flip the whole thing to landscape mode. So you don't have to take this off. But, you know, that's up to you. Now, I'm going to also take some finishing steps. This metal came in with decent sides. I mean, they're not going to slice your finger or anything. But there are some sharp edges, especially after I put it through this vise. So I'm going to first use a little wheel here on the drill and I'm going to get off all the big sharp edges and then I'm just going to use some really rough sandpaper and really smooth the edges. After that it's aesthetics. Now one other thing you might want to do is on this surface here where the camera actually mounts to, you might want to put some rubber. You can get sheets of rubber, you know Home Depot has tons of different options or even you know um, foam sticky tape or whatnot, but what I'm going to do, I went ahead and spent about six bucks on this can of basically spray on rubber. And I'm going to spray the whole thing down. This is going to have the same texture basically as the rubber parts of the camera. So this whole thing will be protected and it'll protect the camera and it'll look black and you know look better, look more professional. Not a big deal. First thing I'm going to do uh, to prep it though like I said, I'm going to get all the rough edges down, and then I'm going to clean it really well. If you have acetone, that's great. Basically, you need to completely degrease it if you're going to spray anything on or put any kind of adhesive strips or rubber or anything like that. If you don't have acetone, you can use um, isopurple alcohol. Just make sure that the surface is completely clean, and uh, whatever you put on it will stick on there real well. So I'm going to go ahead and 
do my cleanup work. I'm going to get these edges filed down and whatnot. And I still need to figure out if I want to go and just get a longer bolt for this or if I want to try to countersink. See, right now, where'd that bolt go? There it is. Right now, I've got just a regular bolt, and it'll go in the hole. These, uh, you can see it'll, it'll go in the hole. Now, the one down there is straight through. It doesn't have threads. So it's just, just going to drop, basically, like that. And I need it to go down a little further, so I would have to actually drill out basically half the depth of this to the diameter of this whole thing, which is almost an inch. And I don't have any bits that big, so yeah, I think I just talked myself into going and getting a longer bolt. So I won't have this cool finger grip thing, but I'll still be able to just use a quarter and screw it in or out. Like I said, not a huge deal for me because I'm only using this for one purpose. So, yeah, it's not like I need a, a quick way to get the camera on and off. No big deal. Alright, so I'm going to go to Home Depot again, grab a bolt, and then I'm going to clean up the edges, and then I'm going to prep it, and then I'm going to spray on my first coat of rubber. It's probably going to take three to four coats to get a nice, thick layer. Uh, this aerosol probably doesn't go on that thick. So, let's try this again. Okay, back from Home Depot a second time. Got the bolt I need. This is going to, once again, go through the bracket and attach to the camera. And what I did is I measured the length I need. You need a quarter inch that goes into the camera, and then you just need to add the thickness of whatever plate you have. In my case, it's three-eighths of an inch, so I needed five-eighths inch total length of bolt. Quarter inch, that's your diameter. Twenty, that's your thread pitch, by five-eighths of an inch long. Your specs are going to be the same for the first two numbers. The length is going to vary, again, depending on the thickness of material. This is the thicker size. If you get the smaller one, you can get a thin one. Or if you are attaching a quick-release plate to the bottom, you have to add in some more depth, and you'll probably be getting the three-quarter inch long bolts. And you're going to have a variety of different head configurations and sizes. I got a flat shouldered bolt here with a nice thick groove on top so I can use a coin just like using uh, you know the normal locking bolts that come with quick release plates so you don't have to have a special tool or a screwdriver or anything like that so now I can go ahead and clean up these edges and I'm going to clean it down with some acetone get it all ready for the spray rubber all right, I've got it all cleaned off, nice and completely free of dirt, debris, and most importantly, grease. Now I've got the spray rubber, and we're just going to put on several nice light coats until it's evenly coated there. We're going to give it 30 minutes and repeat probably three or four times. All right, here we're going to show exactly what all of this is for. You know what shooting panoramics is for, and I've explained what the L-bracket is for to give you a better stance on your tripod for shooting in portrait mode, which is typical of shooting good panoramas. However, this focusing rail here, this is another important part. Is it absolutely needed? No, of course not. Most people don't use it. Most people don't know even why they should. I'm going to explain it to you. The point of it is to get rid of parallax in your photos. It's more prominent in some photos than others, the more close to the camera detail you have in the shot, the more it's going to show up. What I've got here is a test, and this is going to show you exactly what it is, and it's going to dial in my lens at my various focal lengths that I'm going to be working at. So I've got two little pen caps here on top of my tiki torches that you can see, and my camera back here a couple feet. One close, one pretty far. Parallax is when basically things don't line up when you go from side to side. So I'm going to go into live view here. Hopefully, let me try to focus better. Okay, so you can see I, I've got the uh, shot lined up. Let's see how close I can get with this. A little fuzzy there. All right, if you can't see real well, view this in full screen. But you can see that I've got uh, the lens right now is at 70 millimeters, and that's the front pen cap that you can see. Now, I've got them lined up, 
So I've got the other pen cap, I'll focus on that with the camera. Got the other pen cap behind it there. And everything's hunky-dory. Now I've got this mounted, the camera and the tripod, just like you would be mounting it directly without the rail. It's directly over the ball head, just like any old regular tripod mount. Now say you're doing a panorama, so you're going to be going side to side, you know, maybe 5, 7, 9, 11 shots, whatever. And, you know, you're going to be pivoting it, taking another shot, and so on. The problem is, if you have the camera just mounted directly to the tripod and you rotate, you get parallax errors. So I'm going to rotate to the left here, so the pen caps all the way over to the right. And again, this is probably going to be hard to see. Okay, there, I can see the pen cap. Now I'm going to focus on the other one. Remember, they're lined up. But, as you can see... Now you can see that rear pen cap. Here's the front one. There's the rear one. That's not good, because you shouldn't be seeing that. That's a parallax error. And again, it translates in some shots a lot worse than others. But this could be a nightmare if you have buildings or you know any kind of straight lines, trees and stuff. Things start bending, things start shifting. So it, it can stitch funny. Now if you're just doing a very far away type of panorama, you're not gonna see it but anything with close or mid detail, you do. So here's how we get rid of it. It's taking place, let me turn back on live view here. It's taking place because again, the pivot point is over the sensor, but the actual uh, no parallax or uh, pupil entry point of the lens where the image, you know, the, if you don't know, a lens will flip an image upside down to hit the sensor. The light comes in the lens comes down to a point, flips, and goes back up. Well, that point, which is somewhere in the lens, that's what you want to actually pivot around when you do a panorama so you don't have the parallax there. Problem is, your pivot point is behind, so you're actually swinging. It's like if you're doing a panorama with your cell phone, and instead of rotating nicely where the lens is, you were to swing your whole body. See the difference? Here's my body, here's the lens. Perspective changes. That's what's that's what's happening because we're not at the correct nodal point or no parallax point. So all we have to do, got it focused back there on the pen cap. Now we're lined up. All we have to do is with our focusing rail. And by the way, this is mainly for doing uh, up close photography, macro, very fine focus. And I use it a lot for that in the studio, but this is also very handy for panoramas. Now we're just gonna use the adjustments on it, crank the camera back. And if you don't have live view, you're gonna have to take some test shots and compare, but if you do have live view, it's really simple. I'm just going to swivel it again until they're lined up. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, when I pivot it, they stay lined up. No matter how I turn the camera. Turn live view back on again. There we go. Now as we pivot, everything stays in line and it's good to go. And all we have to do is see where we're at. And on the scale here, we're about seven and three quarters. So I know that at 70 millimeters with this particular lens, and this this will be true of any 24 to 70, it's not specific to each serial number, that I need to set it to about seven and three quarters, and that's its correct point. Now, let's say I wanna do wider, say around 35 millimeters. We just repeat the same test. And it's just peeking out. You can see it on the live view here. Rear's just peeking out, so I'm gonna come back a little bit more. And there. Now they're lined up at 35. And let's see where that is. And that's uh, right about at nine. And so on. And you just repeat that process for your different lenses and your different focal lengths. Whatever you happen to shoot your panoramas with, you can 
then save the points on your phone, write them down, make little marks on your gauge, whatever you gotta do. That's all you, that's all you need to do to find that point. And then you have absolutely perfect images to stitch with and it makes life so much easier and it really does improve the quality of your panoramas. So now let's go check back on the drying of the first coating of that rubber. We'll get the L bracket finished and then assemble everything and we'll be all set. Here we have the finished product. Got a nice thick rubber coating on it. Feels just like the rubber on the back of the camera. Just thick enough to really protect it. Plenty of room here to attach any cables like my remote shutter release. Obviously very beefy. Because I did coat it with rubber, I added a washer underneath the bolt just to give it some more surface area for friction so it doesn't pivot. Now using this, like you saw, you can do multiple things with it. You can use it for panoramics or you can just use the L-bracket if you do a lot of tripod uh, portrait shooting, in which case you may want to put a quick release down here instead of mounting it to the rail. You know, it's just like kind of going in between. I've got the quick release down here underneath the rail, then the rail, then I've got the L-bracket. And like I said, I know I'm only using this in portrait mode, so I'm not putting uh, any kind of quick release up here, which would be landscape. If you have one and you were using one down here, you could just flip the whole thing and put it into your tripod that way. But it's total personal preference. One important thing is obviously adding all of this, you're introducing a lot of leveling problems potentially. You should be using good equipment with proper bubble levels. First, uh, it's, it's easy to do, but you need to have the proper bubble levels. Here's one for the feet. I've got them down here on my head. And then either if your camera has in-camera leveling, you can use that certainly. Or if not, you just get a little bubble level for your hat shoe. And that'll make sure that you are absolutely level so when you do your panoramas, when you do the sweep, it's actually correct. That's actually really important for your stitching. But yeah, that's it. Very inexpensive, very easy. You know, maybe you have to buy a couple little tools, but still, I mean, you're saving 150 bucks plus. Not a big deal whatsoever. And in the cases where I do want to remove the battery grip, because I got this long one, I've got two holes. So all I have to do is move it over, take the camera off, take the grip off, put the camera right on the bracket, good to go. And then I'm even extra steady. And I do that for night panoramas or anytime I'm doing relatively long exposures over a second or so just to cut down on vibration because you do get vibration in between the camera and the grip. Doesn't matter what grip you're using or what body you're using. This is not a rock solid mount. So really anytime you're doing tripod photography, it's best to remove the grip. And it's even worse in landscape mode. Portrait mode, it doesn't have nearly as, as much wiggle, but it is still there. So when you do need a rock solid support, get rid of the grip. It's no bueno for high quality. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make them out for yourself. Save some money. See ya.